popular American reality TV show Shark Tank features entrepreneurs pitching to a panel of shark investors. The main investors include Kevin O'Leary, Barbara Corcoran, Look what happened to me when I let Barbara dress me. <laughs> Mark Cuban, Robert Herjavec, style icon Damon John. Thank you everybody who uh, voted on what suit I should wear. And QVC mogul Lori Grinier. They are really durable, but watch when you see how much this holds and why this is so fabulous. Canada and the United Kingdom have similar programs where business owners pitch to dragons instead. Famous dragons include Arlene Dickinson, Manjeet Minhas, Jim Trilliving, Tej Lalvani, and Deborah Meaden. You won't be at all surprised to hear. I won't be investing. I'm out. All three shows have been running for a combined 40 seasons, and the investors have heard thousands of pitches and invested in some incredible products. Over the years, there have been dozens of pitches from vegan brands and entrepreneurs. Check out these seven vegan pitches to find out if the entrepreneurs sealed the deal. Number one, Be Free Honey. Katie Sanchez and Melissa Elms entered the tank in 2016 to pitch their business, Be Free Honey. They were seeking a $100,000 investment for a 10% stake in their company. Be Free is the only alternative honey on the market made from apples. Sanchez is a pastry chef who stumbled across the idea when a batch of apple jelly she was making turned into a honey-like substance. The product is made from organic, 100% plant ingredients, making it a great substitute for honey. We make all of our products in our kitchen using only apples grown in the USA. Bee Free Honey can be used on breads, or as a topping on granolas or oatmeals. You can use Bee Free Honey as the perfect substitute. Tech businessman Mark Cuban was intrigued by the ethical component to the product. If I walk into a grocery store with my kids and it says, buy this, save the lives of a thousand bees, this is a hundred million dollar brand. The entrepreneurs walked out with a $210,000 investment for 30% equity, split between sharks Mark Cuban, Barbara Corcoran, and guest shark Chris Saka. Number two, Evive Smoothie. In season 13 of Canada's Dragon's Den, Dominique Dubé and Claudia Poulain aim to shake up the definition of fast food. Their product is Evive Vegan Smoothie Cubes, and they entered the den seeking $100,000 for a 10% stake in their business. Three years ago, while we were studying at the university, we had busy mornings, like most people, and we realized it was hard for us to keep the good habit of preparing a healthy smoothies every day. That's why we invented frozen smoothie and cubes. The smoothies come in six flavors and are made up of whole fruits, veggies, superfoods such as chia and hemp seeds, spirulina, and vegan protein. Dragon Manjeet Minhas was impressed. Pop the smoothie in a mason jar or a bottle. And then you just add the liquid of your choice. So you just cover the cubes, let the cube melt, and shake it. It's really good. Tastes like a real smoothie, like I would wow. make it all. The dragons jumped on the business opportunity, almost all of them making offers. Dubé and Poulain sealed the deal with Manjeet Minhas, who offered them $150,000 for 10%, $50,000 more than what they came in asking for. Number three, Cineholic. Hi, I'm Shannon, and this is my husband, Florian, and we are the co-founders of Cineholic. Husband and wife duo, Florian and Shannon Radke, pitched on Shark Tank in 2015. Their flagship bakery, Cineholic, located in Berkeley, California, allows patrons to customize vegan cinnamon rolls. The duo aimed to open more locations with the help of a shark investment. They entered the tank seeking $200,000 for a 20% stake of their company. My background in brand marketing and with Shannon's talent for baking, we created the world's best cinnamon roll experience. At Cineholic, it's all about custom gourmet cinnamon rolls. We start you off with a fresh cinnamon roll right out of the oven, and then you can choose from over 30 different frosting flavors and 30 different toppings and create your own very unique cinnamon roll. The sharks were excited to taste test the product. We're always hungry. 
What do we have so here? So for Robert, we're making a caramel banana cream pie. You are speaking my language. <laughs> the offers got a bit sticky when Sharks Robert Herjavec and Kevin O'Leary pointed out that opening a second location is a risky investment. It will either work or it won't. In the end, the Radkeys accepted Herjavec's offer of $200,000 in exchange for a 40% stake in the company. Today, the chain has exploded in popularity with locations in Vegas, Georgia, Texas, and Toronto. Number four, infuse my color. In 2018, the founders of a vegan beauty brand saw great success on the UK's Dragon's Den. Hairdressers turned entrepreneurs Rob Forgioni and Denis Kovalyov, founders of My Hair Care, entered the den to pitch vegan hair dye shampoo Infuse My Color. We would like to introduce you today a multi-award winning PETA certified infusing color shampoo Infuse My Color. The pair were seeking an £80,000 investment for 8% equity to expand their product line into foreign markets. The shampoo is 100% PETA certified vegan and is paraben, silicone and sulfate free. We created a quality product that's free from and vegan. The product comes in five shades, colours hair from dark brown right through to blonde. Just wash the hair, rinse it through and adds colour instantly. Dragon Tej Lalvani was intrigued about the vegetable-based aspect. You're the only guys doing the vegetable dye? We are the only PETA certified vegan and cruelty-free brand. Three Dragons wanted a piece of the cruelty-free hair product. After countering the initial offers, the former hairdresser sealed the deal with Tej Lalvani, accepting an £80,000 offer for 25% of the company which would then drop to 20% equity after two years, once Lalvani has recouped his money. What color are you going to go, Tej? <laughs> Me? Uh, I'm going to go with gold. Number five, Wild Earth. In season 10 of Shark Tank, biotech entrepreneur Ryan Bethencourt pitched Wild Earth vegan dog treats to the sharks. You know, that moment when you, when you walk in and you go, hello, sharks, I was just like, what am I going to say? He started the pitch by asking for a whopping $550,000 investment in return for a 5% stake in the business. Wild Earth's aim is to disrupt the pet food industry with vegan dog food and treats that will put pet owners' minds at ease. Bethencourt explains that we really have no idea what is in most pet foods and that pet obesity is on the rise. Wild Earth's dog food blend comes from cultured human-grade protein made from koji and yeast. Koji is an ingredient revered in Asian cultures with a new mommy taste profile. I'm afraid to ask this, but can we try it? What I have to say, and I will bring it this over. This will be like Tuesdays with your son. Over here. One Are we going to regret this? No, no, okay. no, definitely not. Okay. Wait, All you're right. saying we could actually taste it? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. The dog food is eco-friendly as well, as the fermentation process only takes three days compared to the weeks and months it takes to raise livestock. This is made for dogs, but it's made in our facility. This was made in a human-grade kitchen. It's a flavor dogs love. Yeah. I'm not happy or unhappy. So it's, it's <laughs> just kind it of... It tastes like oatmeal. Well, it's koji, bacon flavor, non-animal based, and peanut butter. Dogs love it. It's got over 10% koji, so we actually make koji ourselves. So it's 10% enough protein? Not off of treats. You can't feed a dog well, off of so treats. These so are treats, they're not treats, dog food. And this is our prototype kibble. So our treats are being, we're releasing them in October, and then our kibble, we're shooting to release it. Wait early a minute, wait, 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 The valuation for the company seemed high to the sharks after learning that the dog food was in the prototype phase. How much sale did you do of anything to make this company worth 11 million dollars right now. We did a lot of R&D. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> you don't say. In the end, tech tycoon Mark Cuban was intrigued by the company's vision for sustainability. Cuban countered the offer with a $550,000 investment for a 10% stake in the company. After the deal closed, Cuban told the press, there's an enormous potential market for lower cost, sustainable protein to feed the growing worldwide pet population and Wild Earth is now the alpha dog in this space. We've actually worked with a lot of incredible uh, people and teams over the last uh, couple of, uh, it's a good boy, we've, we've, over the last couple of months, uh, we actually redesigned our brand entirely. So you'll probably see on Shark Tank, 
Uh, that is our old brand. That was when we were just about to launch. Number six, The Very Good Butchers. In November 2018, Mitchell Scott and James Davidson entered the den to pitch their vegan butcher business. Called The Very Good Butchers, the company makes a range of vegan meats made from beans. They were seeking a $500,000 investment on a convertible note. As part of a Christmas special for the Canadian show, the dragon sat down for a vegan holiday meal to taste test the product. Wow. What sets us apart is we don't butcher chickens, cows, or pigs. We butcher beans. Ah! Oh. Yeah, everything you see on this table is 100% organic, lovingly handcrafted, and entirely vegan. Well done. Wow. My kind of Christmas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vegetarian dragon, Manjeet Minhas, spoke highly of the meat's flavor and texture. The problem with a lot of this kind of food that others try to do is it gets too chewy. And right. so this yeah. has a really nice consistency in your mouth yeah. and it mm. doesn't have that bad aftertaste. Very so thank you. The dragons competed to make the deal, but they all wanted equity in the company in exchange for an investment. $500,000, I go for 20%. Dragons Michelle Romano and Lane Merrifield merged their deals Michelle and I were talking. We think we can actually combine forces here. You know, I can help on the subscription side. Uh, Michelle, you were mentioning some connections, mm -hmm. uh, especially down to the U.S., which is obviously a big opportunity. And offered three quarters of a million dollars in exchange for 10% equity in the business, a deal the butchers quickly jumped on. Just blown away. Yeah, blown away. Don't know what to say. It's great. Number seven, Beyond Sushi. In 2018, Guy Vaknin entered Shark Tank to pitch his plant-based sushi chain called Beyond Sushi. With multiple locations in New York City, Vaknin was seeking a $1.5 million investment to expand his business to the West Coast. He offered the Sharks 25% equity in exchange for the investment. Lori Grinier and guest shark Matt Higgins joined forces to land a deal. Grinier thinks the plant-based sushi will be a hit in West Coast markets. I think this will do even better on the West Coast personally, I think so too. because I think that's the mindset here is even more towards this type of food. The Sharks wanted a piece of both the East and West Coast aspects of the business. Your energy and your intensity, I love it, but my offer's firm, right? You get both of us, you get the entire network, but I need to be incentivized to work hard for you. Vaknin accepted the offer of $1.5 million for 15% of the East Coast operations and 30% of the West Coast operations. Today, there are six Beyond Sushi locations in New York City, and Vaknin has big plans for the future. That's it for today. Which pitch was your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. New videos every Tuesday and Friday.